right, so we're gonna get right into this zombie mani that I did. I've had people ask me how I did it. So I'm starting off here dipping the swatch stick and pumpkin cream by Not Your Husband's Dip. I love her company. Here you're gonna see me use an orange stick just to kind of carve in some scratch marks. And then you'll see me take the other end and form like a gash in the nail. I thought that was a really cool effect. It really helped too when I was pushing the dip liquids up right here. When I went kind of under, it helped push back some of that dip layer to where it looked like raised skin. Right here, I'm just going back through and I'm redefining the scratch marks just to make sure everything is raised up really nicely for the second layer. here because I had to let my dog in so we're just gonna stare at my station for a minute <laughs> all right now we're going back with the second layer of pumpkin cream I did the same thing on my nails I did two layers of pumpkin cream before I went in to put in the red for the scratches and the gash Also being very careful right here to kind of go around the marks that I've made so that way the dip liquids don't flood into the gashes and the scratches because I want to be able to go back in after the second layer and add the black cherry dip. And here I am just going back through those scratches. Um, the liquids did get in there, regardless of how careful I was, but it wasn't as bad as if I just put the brush straight through it. So I'm redefining it once more. So that way we can go in with the black cherry and form the gory part of this. This is what it looks like before I add the red. And now we're gonna move this to the side. We're gonna open up Black Cherry. Again, love her company. If you don't have this color, you need it. And then we're gonna grab our brush. And this is where we're gonna start tapping in the Black Cherry to the very defined areas of this nail swatch. You'll see here, I'm just grabbing that orange stick and just kind of pushing the liquids back inside of that gash mark 
just to make sure that nothing ran over too much so that way I can keep that shape really defined. Okay, so right here what I'm doing now is I grabbed a cupcake liner. I'm going to put some dip liquids in here so that way I can grab some loose liquid with a toothpick and go inside of the scratch marks to make sure that I'm not flooding the areas of the swatch that I don't want the black cherry on. So now I'm just drawing in that liquid into that scratch mark. being very careful right here, as careful as I can be. This way I can be as exact as possible. And then I'll take that brush again and I'll tap a little bit of black cherry into the cut mark. And again, I'm just pushing in these dip liquids further inside of that cut just to make sure. You can't always avoid flooding. You can get a little bit more precise with the toothpick, but this just helps to really get it into that exact spot. And then I repeat on the other two. And then here I just added a little bit more liquid on the gash. Just because it was a little bit wider, I wanted to make sure that all the layers were as flush as possible. So I'm just going back in and doing a second layer of this. So now we're gonna start with the bite mark nail. I'm going back in with another swatch. I'm gonna dip it again in pumpkin cream, and then I'll show you how I got the bite marks on this.
All right, so here is what it's going to look like. I really love doing this nail. It was super fun. So we're going to go in and we're going to dip this in pumpkin cream. If I continue to do these kind of videos, little tutorials, I will learn how to edit videos better. <laughs> so here I'm just taking the pointy end of the orange stick and I'm just kind of digging in and rolling around just to kind of form what resembles teeth marks in skin. Here I'm going in with the second layer of pumpkin cream. I'm not really worrying too much right now about going over the bite marks with the liquid because they're so small that I can just go back in with that orange stick and just kind of dig out those indentions again. Alright, so this is what it looks like. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to define the teeth marks. I want you guys to trust the process because it's going to look kind of weird, but there's a method to my madness. So what I did first here was there was some leftover black cherry powder on the brush. The dip liquids are still kind of tacky, so I just kind of rubbed it in just a little bit so that way it gives a bruising effect. Once I brush off the excess, this is what it looks like. It's just slightly discolored. Now we go in and we define the bite mark. Here's another example of me not editing the picture or the video very well. And this is where I say to trust the process. There is a method to this madness. I know I'm using a gel pen, but this is why. I could have went in with the dip liquid and I could have dotted it into the holes and then I could have used a black dip, but I didn't want it to be too defined in the black areas. So I used this gel pen because when you add dip liquid over it, it's going to run, which means that it's going to kind of streak a little bit. It's going to muddy up a little bit, and that way it looks more bruised around the holing.
Now I'm going back in with the dip liquid. I'm gonna put it over that black and this is where it starts to run a little bit and that's okay. Cause it kind of runs out. You can see that the holes look like they're getting bigger and that's just from the liquid running the ink pen. So once I do this, I go back in and I just tap a little bit of that black cherry on it. So that way it's not a defined black. It kind of goes from the black to the red to really further the, the dimensions of it and give it that bloodied look. This is what I love about it is very little cleanup as I go, just the basics. So this is what it looks like. Now here, I've let these dry a little bit. Now we're gonna go in and we're going to really give it some dimension with some greens and reds and a little taupe color. And that really looks like rotting flesh, bruised flesh. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add just a little bit of clear to this cupcake liner. that I'm putting in is by Nerd Nails. It's called Hashtag Cranberry Dreams. It's a really pretty red and it's got really super fine red glitter in it. And that kind of gives it almost like a blood splatter effect. Maybe even like capillaries that have busted. So I put just a little bit of that on top of the clear. I'm going in with Driver Picks the Music. This is a really pretty green. It's also by Nerd Nails. This help gives it a little bit more of an older bruise look. Bruises tend to turn green and purple once they're so old. So I add a little bit of green here. And then I'm gonna come in with just a taupe color that I have. It's not by a particular business. It's something that I had made when I owned my own dip business that's now closed. Um, but it's just a slight taupe. It's almost like a brownish gr gray color. So now what I'm doing with the black cherry is I'm gonna put a layer of dip liquid on here. And the look that I went for with this Manny was almost like a bloodied, bruised up cuticle line. And so I put the dip liquids on and then I just go right at the edge of that cuticle line and tap in a slight ombre with the black cherry. do have it angled down for the ombre, but I'm still keeping it right there at the cuticle line. I don't want it to be too ombre, but I do want it to fall slightly. So I hold it straight down and tap the excess off so that way it falls slightly down. I shake the cupcake liner a little bit and then I just dip straight into this marbled effect. And when it comes out, you'll see that it gives that flesh tone a really dead look.
And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and activate the swatch on my actual nails. I did encapsulate one layer in clear and filed everything down, but that was just a personal preference for something that I like to have when I'm wearing the nails. I don't like to really feel too much texture. So I didn't worry about doing it on here, but I did encapsulate and clear on my nails. And then I put a matte top coat over it after I filed. So I'm just gonna go in with the same marbling concept with this bite mark nail, but I am gonna be a little bit more conscious about where I put the colors. So Cranberry Dreams right here, I'm gonna put it in one designated area and this is gonna be where I'm gonna set the bite mark on top of it. So that way that there's a really concentrated red around the bite mark. And then I'll kind of bring that out. I'll put some green around it, a little bit of taupe on top, and then I'll repeat the same thing with the cuticle line with black cherry as well. All right, so you'll see here, I'm gonna do the cuticle line the same way that I did the other. And then again, right here, that is the exact spot that I wanna put that bite mark. So I'm being very intentional when I put this into the cupcake liner. Press down slightly, give it a slight roll, and then you tap off the excess. And then after I dust it, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the definition that I was going for. Now with this one, this is just gonna be the other nails that I had on my mani. This is just like the rotted flesh look. It's basically the same as the other two with the marbling of the taupe and the green and the red and the bruised cuticle line, but I just wanted to show you what this looked like by itself without any of the gashes, bites, or cuts.
you'll see that I did do this ombre over the cupcake liner. I wasn't too worried about it. I held it kind of off to the side of the cupcake liner. If any of that black cherry would have fell into it, I wouldn't have been that worried about it. So I did go ahead and just tap it off in there. It gave it just a little bit more dimension, maybe a little bit more of a blood look. And then I just dip this one the same as I did the other two. I'm gonna activate and then I'm gonna put a matte top coat and I'm gonna attach a final picture of the swatches and I'll attach a picture of what my Manny looked like when it was done. So here they all are together. These turned out really well. I'm very happy with how this turned out. I really hope that this helped you out today if this is something that you wanna do for Halloween this year. I truly just love gory manis. This is the top coat that I use to matte my nails out. It's just Sally Hansen. It's the step two matte top coat. I love it. It's never let me down. And so I'm just going to top coat these for you. I hope that you enjoyed this today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, maybe I'll do some more YouTube videos. Who knows?